Morning everybody, David R. Becker here with Becker Art and we are going to try to do a little portrait and I just got done watching my my favorite program on Sunday morning which is called Sunday morning and so it always gets me inspired and so we're going to do a little bit of this painting um, of a, a little girl um, just going to try to make her cute and so let's just go right to it and so here you can see it's um, I put it drew it up I sketched it first with, um, I had used um, the tracing paper first, and then I went back in and because of some of the stuff I didn't like, and so I re redrew it with the pencil, and I put a little bit of masking fluid on here, and so that was just to make things um, a little bit more interesting. I'm not going to use the colors there in the photograph. You can see the, in the photograph, the colors are kind of drab, and actually a lot of black in her face, and dark colors and so I'm going to try to make it a little bit more colorful than I see in the photograph. A lot of times I turn the photograph into um, grayscale and that's what I usually do if I um, am working you know with just looking for values. Always I always tell my students to work with values instead of the color to make sure that you get the right value pattern and it's very important in your composition to what the value pattern is. So what is the value pattern? Sorry I'm putting on my gloves. <laughs> And um, so if you look right here, her hair and her face, the side of her face, are our darks against the background, which is light. And so the compositionally, if I squint my eyes, it's pretty much everything, everything back here is in the light. Maybe a little bit of darks back here. A little dribbling of dribbling, dribbling, is that a word? <laughs> so, a little something of a little dark back here. And so on her face, we have the contrast and we have our darks. And so we'll make them dark, and as long as anything on the face and in the hair is darker than the background, it's, it's going to be okay. And I actually, what, with her hand and with the flower that she's blowing, I'm going to make that a little bit darker, and then make the background behind here a little bit darker, just so that I get a good composition between the lights and darks. And again, try to go for the big lights and darks. And in this instance, it's going to be really easy to paint because I'm doing the background light, and my foreground, which is the girl, is going to be dark. And so this is not a paint along. These are just I do on Sunday morning to kind of show you what I'm doing, uh, what I'm working on. And I actually I practice myself. And um, this is just going to be a practice on doing some figurative work, portraiture work. Um, it's the toughest to do. And so I don't try to do that right away for the beginners. Um, it's a little tough. But let me just clean up my palette here a little bit from Thursday night's um, paint along. I probably should have done that before. But... <laughs> Sunday morning, so hope everybody's woken up. I always, I always watch my Sunday morning program. I really love that program. It gets me so inspired. I love all the um, articles they have in the in the show and and all the people they interview and and there's a lot of times artists. This week they had some potters on there from I forgot what area they were from. I think color I forget, but they um, they do pottery every week and um, it was all about friendship and. And having fun, and that's what I think you should do, be doing if you're if you're an artist. I think a lot of this is fun. I actually enjoy doing this myself. So that said, let's go into this. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start out with the background, and I am not going to pretend like her. Um, I'm not. I'm going to go right through her head, right through the hair because it's going to be darker, and so I don't have to. I don't want to make a line around there. I don't want to make a. The sun is not um, back rim lighting her so I don't have to worry about that so I'm just gonna wet the whole background including her face because I'm gonna maybe get some of that right in there so I'm just wetting everything I'm wetting everything because I really want to get these um, flowers over here soft edged the flowers in back here and so I'm gonna pick my my color scheme in this instance too and um, I'm not gonna make it green because everybody knows that I don't <laughs> I'm not a big fan of green color. Um, it's not my favorite color. And so I'm going to make it uh, more yellowish um, green. And so we're going to go with the yellow with orange. And then in her face, we can do the, um, if I go with the yellow, so there'll be a lot of violets and yellows. And then we can go with orange, a little bit of yellow orange in that too. So we'll go in that instance. And so I'm wetting everything, wetting everything down. Morning, Barbie. And so we're wetting her face even. 
And so we're going to go in there with a little brighter colors than I see. And I'll put a little pink in it. I mean, it's a little girl, so pink is always a nice color to have. And so at the background, let's see. Should I make the background grayer and so it's just back? But I also want to get a nice colors back there. So I'm going to go with a little bit of white. And as you notice, I have my gouache here in the front and my watercolors all around it. And I use them together. They're both basically the same thing in, in, in that aspect. If I'm using it wet into wet, it's all the same if I'm using it wet into wet. Now, when I start using it thick, then I just go for my gouache. All right, and so let's just get a nice background back here. And keeping it light, I'm just kind of taking white and my yellow, because yellow is quite bright. And so I like to tone it down a little bit. And right away, I'm going to try to get um, paint around these around these flowers. And I wish I would have not put the um, pencil line in there. I'm not sure why I put the pencil line in there, because I really don't want to see pencil line. I want to keep it nice and light. But I just want to show you where these are. I can kind of, I should have just made them light and I should erase it a little bit so that I'm making these whites. And I can, what I can also do is put white in there. But I'm going to try to go around these little plants up back here. Working both sides at the same time so I get the kind of the same colors back here. But I want the yellow, orange, white. And I only use white in my paints, not to make it opaque. Just to make it dull down the, the vibrancy of the yellow. Holbein colors are very vibrant. They're super, super vibrant, which is a great thing. But sometimes, like with the yellow, I think it's too bright for me. And actually, on my screen right now, it looks really super bright. But that's the screen, and so it's not quite as bright as I'm on my screen. Now, to get a little bit darker, I'm going to use a little bit of lavender, which will make it brownish. And that's fine. Um, I'm going to go in here, make it a little bit brown. So, like I said, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to use green. I'm just not a fan of green. So um, if there's a color you like, use it. You know, Don't worry about what the picture says. Unless you want to make it look like just like the picture, then yes, go ahead and use green. And so I'm just going over here and just putting in a nice, nice out-of-focus background. Now I have to go over my, I'll go over the face. Now I'm not going to try to make anything um, around her, so I'm gonna pretend like she's not there. Though if I do go into a face, I do want to, later as while it's wet, I do want to get that color that I need, the light colors. But first let me just worry about these flowers on the side here. And I can re always re-wet that area too. Because when you get your soft edges, how do you get your soft edges? Wet in the wet. Always work wet in the wet to get your soft edges. And so I'm putting this down. You can see there's some darks on the side here. And I'll put a little bit darker, put a little violet in there. More of a fall scene than a spring scene, you know, or the summer scene. Um, but more, it's just my choice. And, so, and I like the combination of yellow, yellows and violets too. And because those are kind of my favorite colors. And so why not use them? every right for the artist to use the colors they love and so we're gonna go in here gonna go through her hand don't worry about her hand yet because it's still gonna be lighter the background's lighter than her hand so I can go through there and not have to worry about what is gonna be there don't have to worry about that a little bit of lavender in here I did put masking fluid down on a couple of these flowers so that um, she's actually doing a dandelion, you know, blowing the, the things off the band dandelion. So these are not dandelions back here. And so, um, well, there's the, there's the train, if you can hear the train. A little bit of foliage and stems back here. Now I probably should do the same thing over here. Now, I probably shouldn't have went into her dress because that's going to be her light dress. So I'm going to try to keep away from that. So just put in some nice colors over here. And I want it out of focus. I want it out of focus. So I'm going to work wet in the wet. And before this dries over here, I'm going to put some white in here to get some of these flowers. I'm just going to take gouache now. I'm taking gouache kind of thick. And I'm going to actually put it in there pretty thick on top of the water and it's going to give me the shape of the flowers 
you know, and, I, and if you're a, a true purist in watercolor, this is not, a, this is a no-no, <laughs> but I'm not a purist, so I'm going to be using whatever I can to make the painting look good. So I'm using thick gouache white, titanium white, and I'm just applying it into the wash, and it's still going to look very um, soft-edged, look very muted, but it's going to look like flowers, and it'll only bleed so far because it's pretty thick. The thicker you make it, and this palette really works out really well for this gouache because it doesn't dry at all. It doesn't dry in this palette, so that's really good. I love that about this palette. Where Holbein regular colors don't um, dry in the palette, you know, so they always rejuvenate instantly. Gouache is a little bit different because it has uh, more pigment in it. A lot more pigment. It's more pigmented, and it doesn't have white, except unless you're using white. But they don't um, make it op trans or opaque because of the white. They, um, a lot of companies make their make their gouache by adding white to it and making it opaque. So it kind of makes pastel colors, which Holbein doesn't do that for its colors. See, these are they don't have white in them, but they're opaque. And so what is it they have to do? They have to use more pigment and grind it up more finely. And so. Um, it's a great, great paint. So here I'm using gouache again and a wet wash. And it, you look at how it, it still bleeds and it still gives you a, a feeling of, maybe I'll put a little bit of um, thicker, darker color in there too. Here's a metallic, look at that. I'm just gonna put that in there to kind of identify the shape of some of these whites I put in there. And when I'm, again, I'm using it wet in the wet, so you're gonna just get soft edges, which is what I want. And um, learning how to control that is what you're going to be trying to do, is always learning how to control your... That's the hardest thing in watercolor, is to control a wash that's wet. And so you just have to use a thicker amount of pigment to control it. And since we um, want transparency in watercolor, so what you're going to do is have a lot of water, and that way you just disperses the colors. Even if it's white, it will disperse it, and you'll be able to see through it. So it's still transparent, even though I'm using gouache, I can still make gouache look transparent by adding a lot of pigment or adding a little bit less pigment, but because it's so thickly ground or so much ground that it's going to really show nicely. See, I'm just using this thick. And actually, this has helped my regular watercolor. If I'm just doing regular watercolor with no gouache, it's helped me to use more paint and um, be able to control it a little bit better. So down here, let's get a little bit more that orange that I used on this part. So I wanted this side and this side to kind of look the same. And I'm going to get my background done. I want to get it done before I go move on to the, the figure. So don't, you know, always get the area that you're working on done. Get it done and just move on. Don't think you're going to go back into an area. That's not watercolor. Um, that's like a lot of times if you're using acrylic or oils, you can go back into areas. But with watercolor, you kind of want to, you can go back in there, but you don't want to. You know, the, the, the picture is if you can get it done in the first wash, that's the best. The least amount of pigment and brush strokes that you can get on your, on your watercolor, the better. I can always go back in later with thick amount of gouache and make my hard edges. Um, but I want to have this background blurry, and so I want it to be soft edge, and so I need it to have it wet. I need to have it wet and I need to go in there and just get it all done. And if you can't get it all done, that, again, that's not a problem. You can always go back in later. You can rub out, you can put back in here. I left this, there's masking fluid, so I'm gonna be getting some of my white back anyways. I can also put thicker gouache on there later um, and make it soft edge too by rubbing it. So no problem there. All right, so that's pretty much my background. I think I need a little bit of this dark, though. A little bit of this purplish color into this area. Not that purple, but close. So we're just going to put a little bit of that into this area. Let that bleed out a little bit. That way it covers my um, the dress that she's wearing. Put a little bit of that on this side, too. And actually... I should see a little bit of a dress right here. I'm going to rub that out a little bit. Hey, Jean. And... All right, guys. Thanks for stopping by. <clears throat> so... Putting a little bit of dark in here. A little bit of dark in here. 
I want to kind of put a little bit more darker in this area, but let's make that more vibrant. And so that it'll show the look of the little um, dandelion, the blossom dandelion that's uh, um, now the little feathery look. And it's going to blow, she's blowing away the, the seeds. And so this side of her face, I want, it's going to be dark, but I don't want to go into it because I may leave a little bit of um, little of that showing. This is the part where you really want to work, you know, work all the soft edges. Get those all soft edges all worked out. Um, you're not doing any hard edges. You don't want to do the hard edges yet. You always work um, light to dark and th then you get your color. That's the first wash. Remember my three system is always doing the lights first getting your color scheme all worked out getting all your soft edges and then my second um, step which will be now actually no i still have to do the color of the face and the hands but because step one and step two on the face will be uh, together as one because i'm going to get the dark shadows on her at the same time i'm getting a light so you're kind of combining step one and step two when you're actually doing the face and so I would want to wait until this is, I'm just going to do the, um, the soft edges on there because the features are what you wait for the final. That's the, the detail, and that's step three. So let me wet this area now. And her hair is the last thing I do because it's a big area. And that's the second step, and so I can actually go in here. But I have to do the face first is basically what I'm saying. So let me go in here and just wet her face. And go right over everything. And again, because I'm using gouache, I don't have to worry about leaving white or putting masking fluid. Masking fluid for highlights is okay, but masking fluid on the face, and if you're trying to get soft edges, is not the way to go. <laughs> because it gives you a really hard edge white. And so if you want a soft edge white, then don't use masking fluid. So on a face, what you want to do is keep the forehead more yellow, the cheeks more rosy, and the chin more gray on any um, feature not so gray on a little girl um, but so let's get some rosiness in her cheeks and so I'm looking at the rosiness this is right around here and I'm using my round brush and I can maybe use a little bit smaller round brush because I am working more detailed so I'm gonna pick up some pink I do have pink if you don't have pink just add titanium white and red together to get yourself some pink I'm gonna keep part of her face white you know, just purely as a paper, so it looks really vibrant. I'm just bringing this down because I want it to be soft edged. And you can bring that pink up in here too, it's okay. And his ears are red. Her ears will be dark, but I can just make things all softer edged. And I just want to make things start out lighter. And as you get going, you get darker and darker. And then the thicker, again, the thicker the amount of pigment you use, the thicker amount with no water in your brush, you can then control the edges that you want to get. So here there's a little bit of dark going through here, and I'm going to add a little bit of orange to that, into that. And so pink with orange is a grayer kind of pink, and so that'll be great for the bottom. And I'm not going to make it as dark as the photo. The photo is almost black. There's parts of it that actually are black. I will make it, uh, especially on a little girl, I don't want to make that that dirty. And because it's okay in the photograph, because they're using black in this area too. So what I would do is use the colors that I have back here, which are the purple, and use that for my dark. And purple and the yellow will make a gray or brown. And it's just okay. It's just okay to use that. And so I'm going in here and underneath her chin, I see right here, it's lit up right here a little bit. So I'm putting all the lights in first, and as I go, and it's all wet, so that's good. I, I'm still going to try to use everything wet first. Going underneath her, underneath her hair here, and get some of the purple in there, some purple and red. And so I'm going to just put that in there. And remember, everything gets a little bit duller and lighter. So 20% lighter it gets. And 20% duller, I mean dull, it gets dull when you, um, when it gets done. So you don't have to use dark colors like the photo because I can, as long as I use, I can use any color I want. 
uh, people are always so um, adamant about saying, well, I, you know, I have to use what's in the photograph because that's what's real, right? But you don't really need to. And if you want to see a person who paints none of the colors from the photograph, um, Carol Carter from um, St. Louis. If you want, look at her, look at her work and her portraits and stuff. She uses really bright colors on everything. It's very cool. Very, very neat. Now again, purple. I'm going to use some purple lavender with the red. I'm going to go in here now and then just, it gets makes it a brown, right? It makes it a grayish brown when you're using two complements. So yellow and purple or orangey yellow and purple make it kind of a brownish color. And that's okay. I'm going to use that color through her face. And I also, again, remember, it has to be 20% darker than you really want it. And so that's the hard part is trying to go and say, okay, yeah, I'm going to make this darker than it really um looks you know because then it's like oh man it's too dark no it's going to dry 20 lighter and you need to have that because that's um then it'll go down when it dries it'll be right it's wrong if it looks right while it's wet if that makes sense you have to make it look wrong to make it look right because it has to <laughs> it has to dry and it dries 20 percent lighter so i'm just going in here and see i'm doing all soft edges controlling the water and I don't have to do really detailed stuff yet. I don't have to do like the eyelashes or I'll put makeup on her after I get the big, big areas done, washed in. I'm going to get the big areas washed in. And that's how I come I want my students to learn how to control their pigment. How much pigment you use controls it in a wash, right? And I'm using a lot of pinks because it just, it fits with the background and fits with everything. Instead of using a really dark, dark color, you know, like you see in the photograph, because I'm not using the greens. And so that makes a big difference. If I were using green, yes, I had to put some of the green into the face too, but I'm not using the greens, So I have to compromise with um, the colors I am using. And I'm using purples and yellows, oranges and blues. And I'm putting a little bit of purplish color in here. And the nostrils, you never want to make black, black. You want to make them more warm. Otherwise it looked like she has a dirty nose. And so for the nostril, I put in later, but right now I'm just going to put a little bit of warmth underneath there. So it just looks warm and clean. And her eyelashes later on will be darker. And right now I'm just getting, I'm getting the darker tones and getting the shape and soft edged. And I couldn't get hard edges, but I wanted to anyways, because this is all... This is all um, wet. So I'm just getting the look of the soft edges, which is what I want. Now I will do, let's do her lips right away. What the heck? Take the, the upper lip will be darker and it's starting to dry a little bit. So I can, I can use a lot of pigment. It's almost like I'm putting on lipstick, which I haven't done. I, I should do that to see how I actually do <laughs> lipstick. <laughs> And so here the top lip is going to be darker and the bottom lip will be lighter. And then where the, she's blowing out, that'll be just be really, really dark. And then depends on if the lips are wet, which they usually are. So then what I'll do is I'll um, put a little bit of warmth in there. I'll put a little red. Again, because nothing is as dark as the picture. And so I can't copy the values exactly to the picture. I have to just regulate it from what the picture states. And then also experience of doing um, portraiture and stuff, you kind of start knowing what to use and what not to use and how to make something come forward and something go back. And now I've re-wet this area because it's starting to dry up here a little bit, but I have to get that in there. And get this little line in there. And I have to, I'm going to wet it with my brush a little bit because I'm starting to lose some water here. So I'm just going to wet this area a little bit with a little bit of more water because I still want it to blend softly. I want, and, but it's starting to dry. And so that's the hard part is just getting your brush not wetter than the surface in this part. Oh boy, I have to go in there fast now and I have to re-wet this whole area here a little bit to get that softness in there. So I'm re-wetting this area, which is kind of dangerous. I didn't get to it in time. And so I probably should wait for it to dry but since I'm rewetting the whole area again, it'd probably be okay. And so I'm just going to try to, I'll do her bottom lip later, I think. I'm just going to try to get this darkness in there before I stop there and just go to another part. 
Because I can get the darks again later. They're going to be hard edged, but getting these soft edges is what's important. That first wash, get those in there. Underneath her bottom lip is nice and dark. I'll make it a little warm and a little cool. I'll put them both in there. And there's a little part that's a little bit lighter right here. And doing a lot of drawing of faces and doing a lot of that as an illustrator has helped me a lot with my drawing skills. And so I see images three-dimensionally. You know, I, I look at things and I can, I can change it by the shape because I know how far the nose I want to look forward and how far the, the chin should come out and stuff like that. You learn by drawing a lot. So here we go in there and... And so then we're going in here, getting, and you notice how I didn't do anything on, on her dress or anything because it's all light and I'm, I'm getting my middle tones. Now I am, step one and step two are both the same here when it comes to doing the face because I'm doing my darks at the stage two. That's stage two, right? Do I was putting in your darks, getting your large darks. I'm not doing my detailed darks, but it is kind of detailed, but it's soft edged and I have to get it in now with one brush stroke and I got to get those soft edges. So step one and step two are together in one wash. And that's okay. And, you know, every painting is going to give you diff different challenges and that's something you just got to watch. Now that's going to be her face for now. We'll just keep it, let it dry. I don't want to do her bottom lip because that's kind of wet in there and I can get that later. It's okay to have that a little bit hard edged. And now I'm going to get her arm. There's a big arm of light. And so let's just get it in there. And I added a little bit more picture so that you see the curve there. I um, When I drew it up, I drew it up so it's a little bit bigger. And more of her. I wanted her arm a little bit more in there. So I got her old arm compared to what I have here. And, you know, the arm or up here in the picture, it's cut off. I just want to give it a little bit more. So things like that you got to look for. And so let's wet her a whole arm. And again, this is my Sunday morning thing, so it's not really much a paint along, but if you want to go ahead and paint along, that's fine. I have no problem with that. I don't um, give you the image on this one, only because I don't know what I'm painting until <laughs> I do it, but you can just, um, you know, take it off the, the video here. Or you can go to Unsplash. Usually I get my own, um, all my pictures on Unsplash for these, for these um, demonstrations. And just type in small girl blowing, you know, dandelion, and you'll probably get it in Unsplash. <laughs> and so we're going to go here, and we're going to just get the colors of her flesh now. Again, since I put pink on her, on her face here, I'm going to put a little pink in her, uh, in her arm here, make it just nice and light. More flesh tone. And to get flesh tones, it's a lot of pinks and oranges and yellows, right? I mean, you can't just say that it's just one color. And some people ask me, well, what colors do you use for flesh tone? It doesn't, it doesn't, it kind of matters on whatever is in the area. So if I'm, it's all green, of course, there's going to be green into the flesh. Like, and I didn't use green, so I'm not going to have that. So you just use what you have in, in the rest of the area. And you know, it's um, what flesh tone is. It's very yellow, very red, very pinkish because there's blood in our skin. So that's what you know. And then it's just affected by what's around it. So start out with like a pink and how do you get pink? Red and white. And you can use the white of the paper or use the white of your pigment. And then I'm going to use colors that I've used elsewhere for the shadowing. And so this looks really dark right now in here, but wait until I get the hair. And the hair goes everywhere from my lightest light to my darkest dark. My darkest dark is the hair and the, high, high, the eyelashes. And so those are becoming, and that's what's going to make your shapes and stuff. Right now, again, I'm just getting the big areas, the big lights and big um, darks area and medium areas. And then I'll go for my detailed in the third stage. Always three steps for me. I have found that this works the best. It really does. And, and in every painting, and every painting is a little bit different in the fact that you can't do every painting exactly the same, but you can make it uh, um, enough that you can have it by three steps or three stages. Sometimes those stages come together, like when I did the face, like two of the steps are kind of together. But the detail now would be the third step. And as been, I've been teaching for over almost 30 years now, 35, 36 years, um, it's worked the best. <laughs> it's, uh, 
Um, and when you work, when you teach long enough and you see what works and what doesn't, you know, I know that this works. It's been proven to me because I do it and it works for me. And so I just figure if it works for me, it's got to be hopefully working for you guys. And please ask questions. Always ask questions. I have no problem with that. And for me, this Sunday mornings is just um, watching me paint. Um, my my thing. I'm not thinking about this as being a, a lesson. I'm just letting you into how I'm going to be painting this. I just like to paint after I watch that um, Sunday morning, um, the show Sunday morning, because it just gets me so inspired. I love that program. Always have artists on there. They just um, in Boston. I think they're uh, erected a sculpture with arms from Martin Luther King Day. It, it's just amazing sculpture. And let's see. We're gonna go in here. Now I'm not gonna get my darkest darks, my detailed darks. I just want to get the big again, the big shape of her arm. And so let's get a little bit darker on the side here, and then her fingers and the tips look like they're a little bit darker. And again, these are all soft edges first. First comes the soft edges. And then we get the hard edges later on. Um, that's how come you work wet into wet first. You try to get as much done with the soft edges because you want it to look really smooth and out of focus some areas. And that's the fun part is getting those out of focus areas. It's hard to get that later. If you don't get them right away, it is very, very hard to get those later. So you have to learn how to use your pigment. Use your pigment to its fullest. Really try to get a lot of, it's all about the pigment and water. The paper almost, you can work on any kind of paper you possibly have. If you know how much pigment and water ratio works. And um, I had a couple of new students yesterday and they did great. And cause I just, if you use a style technique where you're putting it down and, and in water and learning how to do wet and the wet, Wet and dry is easy. You just um, leave it dry and you get a hard edge. That's easy. It's the wet and the wet that's hard and getting that soft edge. And in a painting, I like to have both. I like to have wet and the wet and wet on dry um, so that not everything, I mean, there's a bunch of artists who just do hard edges. They don't hardly do any soft edges in their work when it comes to edges of things. Um, and then you have to worry really a lot about the values of things. And so then that becomes very important. So I'm starting out with the lightest color of her hair, and then I'm um, just kind of wetting it with a color so I know where it's going. I'm trying to leave the highlights in, and I notice that on her, the highlights are in the sky are kind of blue because I bet you the, the sky is blue above her, and so you're getting that. But I don't have any blue in here, so I'm going to make this up here more of the yellow, and I can reflect a little bit of violet in there too. I can take a little bit of lavender and reflect that as my lightest color. I know it looks dark right now, but wait until I get into my dark darks in there. This looks dark, and you just got to remember, I'm putting darks in this. Her hair is dark. Her hair is not light. But I need to put the lights in first, which are going to be the highlights. That's one thing about watercolor. You always work light to dark. Where um, if you're working oils, you put the darks in first. You put those in and then put the lights on top of it because you want that to be thick. A little bit different when it comes to watercolor. And now because I'm using gouache, um, I kind of have the... The best of both worlds because I can also put it in afterwards too and and I'm not making her a blonde I'm just using the colors that are going to reflect from the picture into her dark hair and so now now it's all wet and I'm gonna go with my smaller brush and now we're gonna go with the color of her hair which is really really dark brown and what is how do you make a brown compliments remember the purple and the yellow will make my brown so I don't have to actually I just have to mix purple with this in the on the paper I don't even have to do anything else I may mix a little bit of blue and black into that purple to get it dull it down a little bit. But it really should happen with the yellow that's already down. And so I'm just going to follow the lines I see in the picture. And I will use a little bit of black too. What the heck? You know, get it, get it down and get it, get it nice and dark. And I kind of, I want to dull it a little bit more. I'm going to put a little bit of blue and orange in there. That'll dull it down a little bit. Make it a little bit more brown, but her hair, yeah, it's kind of brownish. And this is wet, so I'm getting to get soft edges first. I can get my hard edges later. I can get the hard edges coming when it's dry. I just need to, I'd like to get the soft edges in first. And so we're going to go in there with nice dark. 
nice and dark. And it looks, I mean, it's harder. The only reason that portrait is harder is because of the drawing end of it. Um, it's no harder when it comes to painting. Painting is all the same. I mean, when you're doing a landscape, a tree doesn't matter if it's off a little bit. But here, if this hair is in front of her eye, that may be a, that may be a different story. Or if her eye is up too high in the drawing, that's a, that it's, it makes a big difference. And so that's the only thing about portraiture that is different than landscapes is that the drawing and getting the drawing right. And if you get in the beginning right, but then also when you're painting it, you still got to follow those lines that you drew that are correct and you don't want to go away from that. So that's the only difference when it comes to doing um, portraiture and landscape is the drawing. Compositionally, that all stays the same. You know, you got to get the composition to look good. Lights and darks, big lights and darks. And this is very simple, big lights and darks. The background's my light. Her hair and her face on the side is dark, right? And everything else, that's just this very simple composition. Let's go a little bit more dark here. And let's get this underneath her ear here. It looks like it's really dark. And I can make some of this hard edge now. It's okay to make hard edges. Because it's not wet, and so I we need to wet it. And I already had gotten the darks in there, or the um, lights in there, I mean. And so now I can make the hard edges and create shapes. And so I'm kind of combining my second stage and my third stage here now, because I am getting some of the detail while I'm doing the dark the large darks like you don't have to make it so exact like the stages they can be intertwined at times because in the end it's all it's all going to be come together <laughs> as those three steps have to come together sooner or later so you could put them all together right away in one wash or all three stages too like if you sometimes have to do a painting and get it all done at once well then that's fine as long as you have all those three stages into your into your curriculum of working, the way you work. So I'm just getting her hair now. Now, see how nice to have a nice brush that has a point to it, because you can do it. Bring in your big, big areas, big washes, and then the, then you lift up with your brush to get the detail, right? So our forehead here comes down. It comes down here a little bit. And I would have liked to get it a little bit darker, some of these spots. And I'm going to do that while it's still wet, so I get a little bit, of, a little bit, of, a little bit harder edged. But then kind of bleeds into soft edges too. So I'm using black with purple. So I'm just getting it dark right away. I don't have to worry about, you know. I mean, there's so many teachers that teach that you never should use black. You should mix them all. But you know, if I'm we're hurrying up here. <laughs> It's hard for students to get the black when they're mixing it. And here, if you just pick it up and pick it up and mix the color into the black, you've got it. You've got it done. Don't worry about that. Just get it dark now. Don't wait. So, okay, that's the back of her hair. Now let's get the front hair here. And that's pretty dark too. And again, the colors. Always think about what color you're using. You know, I'm using, this is all color scheme between the yellows and purples and the, and the oranges and the blue, not so much blue. So it's more of a, the, well, I guess the purple is kind of a blue, you know, purpley blue. But that doesn't mean you need to always have, like, if you're using orange, but main, most of it is yellow and purple. That doesn't mean you can't bring other colors into it. But just predominantly, it is those two cut to those two um, colors. Now they come down here. This is going to blend into her eyelashes later. And you're also getting the shape of her face now with these hairs. And I want to hit some of this soft edge, so I'm going to take and bleed some of it softly in there. So it just kind of dissipates and disappears. And then down here, on her chin, her chin is actually darker than the background, but I'm gonna put a little bit of her hair in there and keep her chin a little bit lighter. And that's just my decision. I don't have to do that, but I, I, I like what it is already. And so, hey, if you gotta change things around a little bit like this, where you're doing the chin not dark 
as black as it is in the photo, then that's fine. I'm just going to make it hair on the side of her. Come down. I don't have brown on my palette. Brown is the easiest color you could ever make. I, I don't. You don't need to have a brown in your palette. You need purple and yellow, <laughs> purple and earth tones. And the same thing with greens. You don't need a green in your palette. You just need to use Cronacinum Gold and any of the blues will make great different kind of greens. There's a hair on my paper here. Oh, there we go. I got it right over there. This is a little bit too hard edge now. All right, and so now I think we're getting close to detail stage of the. Now this is all going to be the light, but I'm going to wait till this gets dry, and I'm going to go in with really hard edged um, darks. Now let's get her shirt here. Her shirt is actually in uh, in shadow right here, even though it's really light. It's in shadow, and so I'm going to make the side. And actually, her face here is a little bit too white too. It's a little bit too white. I, I know I wanted it light, but I'm going to have to put a little wash in there. But don't do anything while it's wet. Because then I'm going to get a bunch of watermarks. So I'm going to wait for that to dry. I'm going to go in here and dull that down a little bit. First, I'm going to take her shirt right here and put it into shadow. Since I have a lot of lavenders here, I'm going to go in here with some lavender and put her sh and put her um, her shirt into shadow. So it's going to be white, but I'm going to give it a shadow. And it'll look like it's behind her. The sun is behind her or above. And it's, her face is blocking this part. See? At the same time... I can make some light hairs, like light hairs, and then I can also um, identify the shape of the of her arm by putting a little bit dark right here in her hand, and so I can just bleed that into the background then, and at the same time, I can get this. To, this is negative painting, making the arm come forward, making dark back here, and of course. I never use one color, you know me, when I wet something and I put one color in there, I never put one color in there. I don't want, other colors have to blend into that violet, and so what would that be? The orange and stuff. So in there, I would also put a little bit of orange, let it float. It's all wet in the wet. Float those colors in there, because it makes it look more natural. That's what happens, and it's more natural to put other colors into that, so it doesn't just be purple. A little bit darker right in the crevice down here. There's a little bit of crevice, so I'm gonna put a little dark in there. A little bit of violet, lavender. And everybody talks about, oh my gosh, you're using opaque colors and, and transparent colors all together. That's fine, there's no problem with that whatsoever. Matter of fact, I love it. And I'm this is now a very opaque color, but look at how transparently it looks because I'm I'm floating it into the water of a puddle. You know, and so it'll look very transparent. I, I'm not using it like gouache yet. I'm still using it like a watercolor, and it's very transparent. Look at what I just did. You can see the brown that I had underneath there. I just that's very transparent, and it's an opaque color. So you don't have to look at the um, you know the things on the on the labels like is this a transparent color or is this an opaque color. Just make it your whatever you want it to be. I can make all these gouache colors look transparent by just using them into water and letting them be thin. And actually, sometimes gouache looks better um, thinned out because it has more pigment. It's more pigmented, and so um, it can look really cool. Though it does get, um, it does have the quality of being more opaque, and so you have to watch that, that it doesn't um, cover up the white. If you don't want it to cover up the white, basically. So now I'm going to put a little bit of violet here for the bottom of her dress. And I'm not sure what her other arm is doing, like... This is not her arm, but like you can't see her other arm because it's probably down. So let me just bleed this away. And this again, I gotta get some purple or orange from this side, kind of bleed that in there a little bit. The hair color could be um, reflected into the into the violet also. And here's a little cuff. She has a little little cuff there, um, so that's going to be lighter. And how important is it drawing? <laughs> that is number one. Again, drawing is number one. You have to, you couldn't do a portrait if you can't draw. <laughs> I mean, if you can draw it and even trace it, is it hard with a portrait? Because not only when you're painting it, you have to keep on following all those drawing rules. And so if you're not good at drawing, even after tracing, 
you got to kind of know what to push back, leave forward. And so learn how to draw, you know, and you can trace things, but sooner or later you got to learn how to draw from, from by looking at it and just drawing it. So let me just keep that alone here. Let me put a little dark in here, like inside her little cuff there. I'm going to put a slotch of white because I, I need some white right here. So I'm just going to put a little thing of white to make her go out there. So that's an opaque, that's an opaque white. I probably could have rubbed it out, but I don't want to spend the time. And so I'm just going to put that in there. Give it a little light there. Now, um, since this is, it looks like it's wet, I'm going to take my masking fluid off. This is all dry. And so I'm just going to take my masking fluid off. I'm going to take my beta rubber eraser which I had here a second ago. Hold on, let me see if I can find it again. There it is. I like to take a needle rubber eraser and I just kind of erase the the, the uh, masking fluid that I left there. It's dry now. You can use a rubber cement pickup too. I like to use a um, rubber cement or the um, eraser because it also erases the line then too underneath it, which is kind of good. It kind of does the two things at once. So I put a little bit of masking fluid in, and if you're going to use masking fluid, use very little bit, especially if you're using this pipe paper. It has to be very thin, and Holbein masking fluid is very thin, and people put on way too much of that Pebio. They, they put on very thick. Um, the, the, you don't need very much at all. I use the um, Holbein masking fluid, and really, you it's so watery and use it like that. Don't think you have to pile it on and make it like tape or it's really thick. No, it's uh, as long as it touches it, it's enough. You know, as long as it touches the paper, you're going to get it to repel the paint. So this is how easy it is to come off. You just don't have to use too much. People think they have to make a big glob like clay to cover it up. No, you just need a little bit and it comes off perfectly fine on this stone end paper, which is a little bit softer. Not like, um, whole, or arches because arches, you know, it's a tough paper and it won't rip, but this is a little bit lighter. But also, this doesn't absorb as much um, as arches. And so I, I like the fact that I can rub out very easily. So now I got the masking fluid off. And so let's get a little bit of, um, get some little shadow into the flowers. Let's see if anybody asking any questions here. Anybody watching? Hey, guys. <laughs> Look real quickly. Sorry, guys. Fresh and see if there's anybody here, out of here. All right, a few people. Thanks. So now let's get into the details. And so we've got pretty much the big areas done, the big mediums and lights. And now we're just going to go in there and get details. And so underneath the each, underneath this um, little dandelion that's already almost went to seed. And so I'm just going to make it a little bit dark here. Give it a little bit of lavender. You know, I don't look for colors in the picture. I look for colors I've used. And so I know this plant is a probably a lot of white. And so what did I use for my white areas to, to use as, because what is white with anything that's white, you can use any color for shadowing, but I'm going to use the colors that I have used and, and with my color scheme. And so violet is one of them. And so I'll put it in there. Lavender. Now these over here are not um, these dandelions. And so I didn't get all the masking fluid off of here. Actually a, a glove also gets it off. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm going in here and just getting the look of whatever this plant is. And this is detail stage now, and this is where you can take your time, make it look good. As it goes back there, I'm going to go from the from the violet to more of the orange because then I don't I I want it to blend to the background, so I, I wouldn't use a, a different different color. I'm going to use the colors that are already back there, and so because I don't want you to go back and look back there right at the moment, and so I'm not going to use purple purple. I'm going to use more of the colors that are already there. And to find those colors, it's easy. You're, you just look for your palette. You, I mean, you already use those colors on your palette, so just dip into them. And that's why I come. You want to use a lot of fresh colors and get um, pigment like oil, or like um, Holbein because they don't dry out. And so 
you're working with a lot of pigment. You can't work with dried up pigment on watercolor. It's just, it's, all you'll get would be tints, tints of things and tints of colors. And it won't give you this ability to be able to control it then either. The reason you can control it is because of the amount of pigment that you're using in your watercolor. Put a little bit of violet in, or orange in this too. And please tell all your friends who are artists who are starting out, if they want to start out, follow me on my Thursday night videos. We're starting t this next week with one color. And um, this week we already did, we did a sunset scene, which is really good for learning how to do um, painting. It's sunset scenes are really good um, exercises to do. So now here we're going to do a little bit of the warmth through here. And we're going to bring it down. Here. And it's okay to re-wet an area and then just um, keep it wet by taking a nice clean color and or water and then just bleeding it into the light area. Like if I want to make this soft, I just take a little bit of water there and you can make things soft again the second wash and it's fine. I'm going to bring this down a little bit, a little bit darker. Dull the ear down a little bit. Here I need to make this a little bit darker in here. Kind of bleed the, the hair right into the area. I want to have the eyelashes. Bring that down along the nose. It gets really dark behind here. Uh, identify the shape of the nose. Now, when it comes to children and kids, many of the uh, um, painters, beginners, they make them look too um, old. They give them too large a nose, too long a nose. Basically, on a child, all the features are close together and they have a lot of head around it. Where on an adult, that's when it separates the eyes and nose and mouth get a little bit, you know, a little bit larger. Um, so keep your, keep your features together. And um, nice and small and pudgy, like your nose is pudgier. And kind of just soften and also softer edges help out a lot. Like, let's do our bottom lip here real quick. Use a little bit of the opaque so I don't have to go in twice. I'll make her bottom lip a little bit redder than it is in the photo. This is going to be really dark right there where she's blowing. Bring this top lip first. Okay, and you're gonna need, there's no, there's no, if I look at it in the picture, and if, I'm just gonna put this big for a second to sh show you, is that her, her bottom lip has no light on it, right? It's just uh, underneath there. And so um, I can do that and make it all dark like that. Or I can put a little bit just to round it off a little bit. Um, I can do a little bit of um, things in there. So let's see. Let's make it, make it not quite as dark. Is that I don't think I'll use color. I use a little bit brighter color to make it come forward instead of or make it go back instead of um, separating it from the upper lip. I'm gonna use just a little bit brighter color, but still probably as dark. Maybe even a little bit of highlight. What the heck? And then bleed this into the background. Again, if you don't want to see a certain part. Bleed it, bleed it away, <laughs> bleed it away. And then the side of her face has to combine with this part. So again, what is this all about? It's all about the drawing, right? I mean, to make it look right, you have to have the drawing right. It doesn't matter what color you use, what value, the drawing has to be on. If you don't have the drawing on, uh, it's just not going to work. The drawing has to be what it is. So spend your time when you're doing a detail and, you know, don't go fast with your details unless your style is very um, abstractish and you're kind of going really fast. That's fine. You know, there's some people who do have that kind of style where they go really fast and messy and that's okay. 
it's it's it'll depend on what your style is but you have to practice that enough to know what your style is and to do that here put a little darker underneath her chin here now that i look at it i probably should have left this light so uh, remember i said i wanted to make this um, the chin light against the dark well now it's biting me in the butt because now her chin is um, lighter than the background and I can't use the chin being dark to show the shape of it. And so now it's about the same value as the background, so that's not good. So we're gonna think one or the other. Let me just do this part here. I should put also a little purple in this area. And I don't have her darkest dark shade in there anyways, like for the eyelashes, because those are gonna be almost like black. And underneath her nose, or the nostril and stuff will make it nice and warm. And we can even make her upper lip a little bit darker. Nice dark. We're going to take a little alizarin, a little bit of black. And make her upper lip a little bit darker. I think what I'm going to do is rub out. I'm going to turn it sideways for a second because I, I think I made a mistake by making this darker behind there. So I'm going to rub it out and so that her lip and her chin will be darker than the background. Because I actually, it's, it's got to be that way because that's what my value study says, right? My picture says that this is light back there. So I'm just going to lighten this up back there. Take my paper towel. I'm going to rub out. You know, you can rub out. I'm going to get my background dark um, light again. And then when this is dry, I'm going to go back in and get the background or the, the chin darker than the background. I can put the same color back in here. There we go. So you can make mistakes, you know, you can, you can make mistakes sometimes and then go back in. Make this a little bit lighter. nice and light take this yellow and white just gonna make this a little bit lighter here again it is a drawing it's very important for your drawing to be correct and let's let that dry we're gonna leave this alone now and we're gonna go into other parts that are dark and so let's get our eyelashes and look at I put the shadow too hard edge here I'm just gonna wipe that out a little bit now let's get her eyelashes. And so for the ladies, it'll be like putting on makeup. You know, you just I'm gonna take black mascara <laughs> and I'll put it on her eyelashes. And how long you want to make them, that's up to you. I like to use the side of the brush to kind of make the little lights. And then there's also be some warmth underneath there. You don't see her eyeball actually, so you just see her looking down, so you don't need to worry about that. And then this side, just kind of use the brush and I tap it. Let me give her some eyelashes. Then the dark underneath there, the eyelashes, I'm going to make warm, like maybe an orange, orangey yellow. I'm just going to dip in there to make some shadowing. This is more shadow than it is like the eye or anything. It's just shadowing from the eyelashes because it's the eyelashes are a uh, thickness, and so they're going to throw a shadow across their face. Underneath the eyelash is going to be a shadow. So that's what that is. It's just a darker shadow. Now, I'm not, like I said, I'm not making it as dark as the photograph. So I'm not going to make it black like it is. I mean, her face and a lot of these are really, really dark black. I'm just going to keep it to a little bit less than black. I'm still going to make it dark, but just not black. Making it warm, use these colors that are warm. Some orange. Top of her eyelash goes in a little bit dark here. It's basically like you're drawing. Now you're draw almost drawing with your paint. Her eyebrow. Just gonna put a little bit of um, lines in there and make sure this is dry. And the, the bottom isn't dry, but that's okay because then it can bleed in. The top part is dry. And it can be pretty big. Um, 
compared compared to the eye. Now I'm, I'm almost making her eyes too big because it's, it's still it's a little girl, so I don't want to make her eye too big. And no makeup on a little girl like this, just keep it flesh toned. A little bit darker here. And then over here, the same. Make it nice and dark. Eyelash. I'm using black. Basically, I'm using black. Here, a little bit right here. Just put that in there a little bit. And then the black again for her hair in front. I'm going to make this my brush really wet. Make a little bit of red. It's really dark, and then I'm going to come in here and get some really dark, dark, dark strings of hair. And same thing on this side, I'm just going to start getting some really dark, dark um, hair in here. So now it's all hard edged, and now it'll drop it forward, and you're going to make it look very realistic now. identify the shape of the forehead here. Some of this could also be shadowing. And we'll go down here. Dark details matter so much, so don't don't spend so much time with other stuff and then all of a sudden just go really fast with the detail. No, actually spend more time with the detail than you do with the big areas because this is what creates the shapes of everything. So and hard edges really stand out, so you got to make sure that they look nice when you get into the hard edges. So go slow and, and just determine what you're doing. What is it that you're trying to accomplish by putting the dark in there? Is it underneath the hair, showing a one hair strip like this? And then her ear got really dark inside her ear here. Make that warm. Oh my gosh, look at that thing. Hurry up and get that rid of that. I just put my finger into the sky or into the background. And again, get rid of that. I don't want that. And see, I also did right there. I put some yuck. I put some yuck there. <laughs> Watch where your finger goes. Watch where your finger goes when you're painting. Okay, a couple hair strokes here now, and I'm gonna get the darks through here, negative painting, some of the hairs. It's really dark here. Individual hairs you can put in here now, like with a real line, and you actually can use a rigger brush to get some really fine detailed hairs. I'll put a little bit of warmth in that, and so I'm not using just black black. I can put a little bit of other color in there. I wonder if I should, because I kind of wrecked this, I wonder if I should just make this all dark now, like have the other hair in there. That may be a good thing because I took it too far down. If you look in the picture, the hair only goes to here, and I've taken a little bit farther down. But to get that look, maybe of her chin and stuff, I can make this really dark. Mm. See, those are the things you should determine right from the get go. <laughs> so, let me see. Get her hair here. There's, there's this nice, look at this nice hair coming right through here. Can I use acrylic white instead of wash? Yes, you can. Definitely. Definitely. I have actually in this, I have this one is um, my uh, um, watercolor wash and this is acrylic wash. And I can use that too. I've, I've actually done that. Yes, you can definitely use acrylic wash or even acrylic paints. It's okay. It's all the same. It's all water based, and so you can definitely can use that if you feel like you want to put that there. And you even wash water it down so it acts like watercolor. So definitely you can do that. Uh, 
I'm going to push this really dark. I'm going to put her hair there. And so what I do first, I'm going to go in there with a, a dark. It just, I think I, it will help a lot. Because right now this is whole, I know I have to make the chin darker, but I think by making the background, it'll, it'll give me a better look on the on flower she's blowing too. Because you don't even see it in the picture. You don't, don't actually kind of see the little um, flower that she, or the dandelion that she's blowing. So I'm going to go in there and make her hair right here. I'm going to bring her hair down. I'll get the shape of her face with the dark. And make that hair instead. Hopefully that won't make her look too old. I'm just, that's the only thing I'm worried about. That will make it look too old. Like her hair is, well, let's see. I can always wipe it out. <laughs> That's always the biggest problem is making a, um, a young child look too old. And um, this will make her make it really dark right here. We're still gonna make her hair back here. With the orange, we're gonna make it a little darker here. Get some and we'll still have to make the bottom of our whole thing here a little bit darker. But while we do that, let's go into the let's go into the hands. This is probably going to take a little bit more than an hour to do this demonstration only because, again, it's a little bit more difficult to do a, a portrait than it is to do anything else because of all the details of the drawing and the painting. It's not just, um, you can't just put a swipe for a tree like you can with a tree. You have to make the right swipe and make it look like the drawing. So that's the only thing about um, doing a portrait is, is, again, the drawing end of it. Nothing else is different. Nothing else is different. It's just that it's more important. So everything you're doing in a painting of a, of a portrait is the same except for the drawing and getting the drawing right. Kind of bleed that together. now with a darker blend things together see how darks make things come together you know it's like it the dark and getting things to bleed away where you don't actually see what's going on in certain areas that's the thing when it, oh by one little one little swipe look at how I just made her nose too thin you gotta be so careful with your um, lines and your swipes one little swipe a centimeter you know it's just can make things look different yeah you know, that's what, that's what portraits are though you just got to watch it here's here I need some of this dark and this elsewhere and so I'm gonna bring it down into this part of the part of her the dandelion here and then maybe the stem or it could be hair bottom of her hand I'm gonna try to get a little bit darker because you see you need the same look of this dark somewhere in the foreground in her hand which is uh, is there in the photograph because it's farther forward and so you definitely need that kind of contrast in the front here just as you do the, um, the, uh, the background looking the same. So nice and dark. Maybe soften it with a soft edge then. Again, you can soften a hard edge just by putting a little bit of water next to it, letting it bleed in. See, I'm just putting a little bit of water next to it and that'll bleed it up. Now I made her hand too thick right there. Skinny that up a little bit. A little bit of orange underneath your nose here. It's a little bit dirty looking. A little bit of bottom lip should be a little bit darker. Or chin should be actually darker too. 
got to make sure that's dry right there, though. Because the whole bottom of her neck and her whole bottom chin have to be darker, again, to push that difference in there. And this down here, because I added more, I got to show a little detail of something there. So maybe I'm going to put a little dark here to make it represent something. Because, again, the picture is different because I, I ended up doing more, so... That doesn't look right if I don't put something there to make it a little bit darker. Maybe a little bit more orange. Don't be afraid of doing portraiture. It's probably not, probably not going to be the greatest the, the first wash or the second time you do it or the third time. It takes a while. Um, portraiture, again, is, is tough because of the drawing. So, um, you know, trace it if you have to, but still it's going to be tough because when you're tracing, you're just tracing the image and not really understanding the three dimension of it. And so think of it three dimensionally, like what's happening, you know, what's in back, what's in front, what's behind, what's in front. It took me years to figure that out because I was an illustrator. And all these illustrators would be doing all these beautiful um, drawings. And, and it just was amazing how they just think of this stuff out of their head. You know, because I worked as an illustrator, storyboard illustrator. So you make up everything out of your head. And they are so good at doing that. And so I wasn't at first. And then it just took me a while. It took me a while to learn how to do that. It's tough. It's a lot of drawing. And it's a lot of drawing from your imagination. darker here to identify the shape of this flower or the dandelion. All right, final thing is I'm going to go into this face here. Let me turn it upside down for a second. And um, I want to wet it all through here. It's going to re-wet it. I'm taking just pure water. I'm going to wet these areas. And I want to go in with new pigment and darken it. I'll take it right through the right through the white here because I think this is almost a little bit too white. Turn it over again, and now form it again. You know, because I can start from the get scratch again. Remember in the beginning when I put the put the darken in, it just never got dark enough, and it's that happens a lot. We go in and you don't get quite the, what you want the first wash. But that doesn't mean you can't go back in. You can definitely go back in. A little bit of... So I'm going back in, redoing the soft edge part of it. It's going to get a little bit darker. But you, like you said, you have to wait till it dries, then re-wet it all. And then you just go back in and then just get the nice soft edges that I got in the first time, first place. Adding a little bit more color and making it a little bit darker. So, see, so you can, even with watercolor, you know, people say you can't go in. You can, you just have to be careful in how you do it. You got to go back in, you got to rewet the whole area. Use a little bit more pigment, a little bit darker pigment. And I'm going to get this part now a little bit darker underneath her lip here. Bring it over. I'm using a little gouache in this part. You notice I picked up this little gouache right there. Gouache is just a little bit uh, more ground, and so you're getting more pigment that makes them a little bit more opaque. So it covers better. It covers, and it's not transparent. So it covers a little bit, but it's still wet, so it still will be transparent. It's just not as transparent as a watercolor. Take a little bit of the orange, pink. Orange pink is a great color, salmon color. Beautiful color to use on, on flesh tones, salmon color. And so it has a little bit of a thing there. A little bit up here, right into the head. Now I'm going to get her chin really dark. Watch this. I'm going to go in there with a nice violet. Yeah, because her chin, look how dark her chin is or underneath her neck. You know how dark that is. That identifies the shape of her. So that's a lot of paint. You know, use a lot of paint. I'm using opaque. And I can go back in there when it's totally, totally dry and then also make things dark or light with just, with thick. You, you do that. 
I don't like to do that as much. I, I kind of like to keep it. And her nose here got a sharp edge, and that's soften that. Come there with a little bit more pink again, down here. And I don't blend. I let the paint as much as I possibly can. I let the paint do the blending, like I let the water blend my pigment together. You notice I don't do a lot of like back and forth with the brush. I try to, if I can make the watercolor do it for me, that's the best. I try to keep it so that it does it on its own. Here I'll wet his upper lip, wet her upper lip. Get that nice and soft right there. See, I wet it to get the shape, I uh, get it to get the softness for it. I don't really need to do much blending when I put water down because it does it on its own. Here, do this part a little bit. I'm just putting in paint and letting it blend. Letting the water blend it for me. And here, maybe I can lose the edge a little bit. And I'm going to put the bottom, make the lip a little bit more red there. If you lose the edge, then you don't have to determine where the edge is. Like if it's just soft edge, then that's awesome. Because then you don't have to put an exact edge right there. So this will be a little bit darker. I don't want to make it too warm, her neck, because otherwise it pops forward, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little bit of violet. And then it got a little bit too warm. I'm just going to make this a little dark. And bring this down on the side here. Let's bring that dark. And what else, guys? Um, maybe um, now the stripes on her shirt. Maybe make them a little bit more pronounced so that I can get the look of the shape. And I also get some of this orange into her because... There's a lot of orange in the background and yellows, and so maybe these stripes can be orange. And I also can show the shape of the, the shirt then too, and that this is a, a part of the shirt. Maybe her collar around here is a little bit of the orange. Maybe this goes around here too. Would it go down or around? I can't quite see. So make it around. A little more puffy, the lines. And then maybe a little bit into this area, make it lighter. A little bit of dark right here to show that what's happening there in the arm. All right, what do you think, guys? <laughs> Any questions? That's about it, guys, unless you see something. And let's say um, we want to put, let's put some dark, let's put some um, gouache in here for highlights. So let's take a little bit of this violet and blue, maybe a little violet and blue. And what I'm going to do is put a little highlight in our hair because on the top here, there's a little highlights. And so this is thick. I'm putting a little violet highlights in our hair. And this is opaque now. This is very thick, but that's okay. You know, there's no problem with that. I don't have a problem with it. Make it a little bit more light. It'll make it look shiny. Maybe down here, one going down. Was that a mistake? Uh-oh. little highlight there. And then let's put, and then also some light ones. So let's take um, some of the white with some yellow. Maybe a little bit of gold, gold and white. And then put it back here. Get a little highlights back here. And again, this is thick. This is gouache part. This is the part where I'm using it thick. I'm not, I'm not watering it down. I'm using it very thick. I'm watering it down a little bit so I can get it to release from my brush. That way I can get the hair. And look at this little part right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. That right brush stroke was great. <laughs> Let's have some fun. This is, a, this is a part I like a lot. <laughs> Getting this, um, I, I really have enjoyed doing um, gouache over it. It kind of brings me back to my oil painting days. I used to paint in oils, too. Um, I'm going to start, I think, this summer going back into doing some oil painting. So I will be on a, um, the next couple, um, 
paint alongs on Thursday night starting next week I will be in Florida so and then for two color I'm gonna be actually on a boat a cruise and so we'll be working hopefully that they have good enough um, Wi-Fi on the cruise to show you I'm gonna be doing maybe some plain air also on Sundays because I'll be on in Bermuda and I will be in um, Florida And that's coming up, and so I gotta take all my stuff with me. All right, guys, I think that's gonna be about it. I think I can't think of anything else to put on here. Maybe some stems. And this again, right now I'm using gouache, and so let me get some nice thick gouache in here, and I'm just gonna put it on there thick. Some stems going in here and there. I'm using pure white for some of these flowers. And then it'll, and actually using gouache thick, it actually is kind of like using an oil paint. So you use the white afterwards. This is all detail stage now too. And so, um, you know, how far detail you want to get it. I can make this look picture perfect, almost photographic, if I would go down and just do every little thing. But I'm not going to do that. This is enough for me. I'm here got a little bit of rub that in there a little bit <laughs> that would be her arm is too big isn't it not a huge she's got a huge arm here let's dull that down a little bit in there put a couple more stems in here I could also use a stencil if I wanted to and go in here with this nice stencil in the background, but no, we're not going to do that. Maybe if I look at it enough, uh, look overnight, and if I see I need something more, then I could also do that too. A little bit of flowers over here. So that kind of blends together on both sides. Just got a little bit carried away here a little bit. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching me on Sunday mornings here. Oh, I see one more thing. One flower right here. A little bit of violet. All right. Let's do a little bit of the... I would sign it also. I would sign it right there with purple. My name in purple. <laughs> so thanks Steph, for stopping by on Thursday. I mean, on this Sunday. And um, I'll be putting this on YouTube also if you want to watch it again. Or watch it here on Facebook. I may um, even put in a couple of little things like the parts or make it short, like the, the three possible steps. Because it was kind of done in three steps, like I always try to do three steps. But I don't think I see anything. I'm going to look at it again and I may um, have a cup of coffee, look at it again and see if there's anything I need to do. But I think it's pretty much it, guys. All right. So thanks again for stopping by, guys. See you on Thursday for a one color study. So get your one color ready. Also, you can use black and white, um, but find one color that you like. And we're going to be taking a very colorful picture and showing you how to make it black and white and make it one color and worry about the values. Again, the values are so important, like it is in here, right? Look at the darks in there and the background is light. Very simple. So until Thursday, we'll see you then. A big chop. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Bye bye.